maps can show how geological boundaries interact through the landscape. And we can use the map patterns of these boundaries to establish their three-dimensional geometry and even predict what the geology is in unmapped areas. And we do this using structure contours. This is an example that's based on a real map from northwest Scotland. We're going to draw structure contours on the base of a stratigraphic unit that's here termed the Erebor Quartzite. We're going to use these structure contours to estimate the orientation of this boundary, in other words, its strike and its dip. And then we're going to estimate the true stratigraphic thickness of this unit by using the outcrop width. And we're going to project the structure contours that we'll construct on the Erdlock Peninsula, which is that part of the map that already shows the geology, and we'll predict the trace of the base of the Erebor Quartzite on the southwest side of Loch Glen Cork. So let's get on with it. And first of all, let's identify the base of the Erebor Quartzite, and it's this side here. Right, so let's try and construct some structure contours. So we're going to draw structure contours on the base of the Erebor Quartzite, and in that dark blue blob, I've picked where the base of the Erebor Quartzite comes down to sea level, at that point there. And on the southwest side of the peninsula, we can find the same boundary down at sea level, again, therefore, at the same elevation. So that's zero meters. And if we join those two points up, we create a structure contour, which shows the position of the base of the arable court site at an elevation of zero meters. OK, so now let's work higher. So here is the intercept of the base of the arable court site with the 50 meter topographic contour. So where the green blob is, is where the boundary lies at an elevation of 50 metres. And we can find another intercept over here, again on the southwest side of the peninsula. Join them up, and we create a 50 metre structure contour. Let's continue. There's the intercept of the 100 metre topographic contour with the base of the Erebor quartzite. So again, that's where the base of the quartzite lies at an elevation of 100 metres, and we can find it again over here on the southwest side. Join them up, and that's the structure contour of elevation 100 metres. Finally, we can find the intercept of the 150 metre topographic contour with the base of the quartzite there, and again here. Join those up, and that's the 150 metre structure contour. So here we have an array of structure contours from 0 metres to 150 metres. OK, now let's use this to determine the orientation of this base of the arable quartzite. And what we can see is that the structured contours are essentially parallel and equally spaced. Therefore, the boundary is approximately planar. It has a single value then of a strike and a single value for the dip. So now let's estimate the orientation, its strike and its dip. And we'll start off with the strike, which is simply the trend of the structure contours relative to north. In other words, it's a bearing. We'll just pick one of these structure contours. Let's take the zero meter structure contour. And we can see that makes a bearing relative to north, which is up and down the view. And that bearing is 032. So the strike of our boundary is 032. But what about its dip? Well, to get the dip, we need to use the gradient of the boundary. And the best way to do that is to pick the two extremes of the structure contour array that we've got, 0 metres and 150, measure its separation and the distance over which that occurs. So the difference in elevation is 150 metres, and that occurs over a distance horizontally of 770 metres. Notice we've measured that horizontal distance perpendicular to the trend of the structure contours. That is the dip direction. So let's establish the trigonometry. And we've said that the elevation change of 150 meters occurs over a horizontal distance of 770 meters. The tangent of the dip then is simply 150 meters divided by 770 meters, which is approximately 0.2. So the inverse tan of 0.2 is 11.2. Now at the scale of the map we're working, there's no way we can justify a precision of fractions of a degree, 
Indeed, it's likely we can only make an estimate to within two degrees. So the nearest two degrees value is 12 degrees. So let's put this together and we can say that the boundary has a strike of 032, a dip of 12 degrees, and that's down to the southeast. And you can see that because the zero meter structure contour is southeast of the higher elevation, 150 meters. So that boundary goes downhill towards the southeast. That's the dip direction. So let's state that again. The boundary has a strike of 032. It dips 12 degrees towards the southeast. OK, let's go on to the next part, which is to estimate the true stratigraphic thickness of the arable quartzite. And we're going to do this using the outcrop width. And the easiest way to do that is to determine the separation of the zero meter structure contour on the base with the zero meter structure contour on the top. So these two red blobs are where the top of the arable quartzite comes down to sea level. In other words, they're at zero meters. Join those up and that's the structure contour on the top of the arable quartzite at an elevation of zero meters. Notice that the two structure contours are parallel. And if we were to continue this exercise looking at the full array of structure contours on the top of the arable quartzite, these two would be parallel to their equivalent values on the base of the arable quartzite. That relationship allows us to demonstrate that the arable quartzite has a constant thickness. In other words, the top and the base are parallel to one another. That's a necessary requirement if we're to estimate the true stratigraphic thickness, because otherwise there'd be lots of different thicknesses for the arable quartzite if the top and base were not parallel to one another. Right, with that proviso in mind, let's get on with the trig. So, the separation measured on the map perpendicular to these structure contours is that distance there. And that, as it happens, is one kilometre, or a thousand metres. So now we're going to do some simple trigonometry on this. And we're going to relate the outcrop width to the true stratigraphic thickness by referring to the dip, which we've just calculated and is still on the screen, which is 12 degrees. And we're making our measurement towards the southeast, so the dip direction is already taken into account. So in the cartoon there, I've marked the top and the base of the parallel-sided unit, the arable quartzite. And here's the trigonometry. The true stratigraphic thickness, T, is measured perpendicular to the boundaries. It's the shortest possible distance you can measure between the top and the base within that formation. So we've got a simple right angle triangle there, so we can do some very simple trigonometry. The outcrop width W relates to the true stratigraphic thickness T via the sine of the dip. So the true stratigraphic thickness T is simply the sine of the dip multiplied by the outcrop width. Well, the dip we know is 12 degrees. So the sine of 12 degrees comes out at 0.21 multiplied by 1,000. So we come out at 210 metres, which is the true stratigraphic thickness of the arable quartzite. So already we've learnt a lot from the map pattern on Erdelock. We've worked out the orientation of the boundary and we've worked out the thickness of the arable quartzite. Now let's go on and use this information to find out something about the unmapped area of the map, that part that is southwest of Loch Glen Cool. What we're going to do is to project the structure contour array from Erdelock across Loch Glen Cool. And we're going to use these projected structure contours to predict the trace of the base of the arable quartzite in that unmapped area. So let's do that. Here's our projection of the zero metre structure contour, in other words, sea level. And we can see that it intersects the land on the other side of Loch Glen Cool, just there. So that should be a place on our geological boundary, the base of the arable quartzite. Let's do this again now for our array of structure contours. Here's the 50 metre, and we can project that across, find where the structure contour of 50 metres intersects the topographic contour of 50 metres, and that will be a point on the geological boundary, the base of the arable quartzite. You get the picture.
Let's do it again with a 100 meter structure contour. There we go, project it across. And this is where it intersects the 100 meter topographic contour, another point on our geological boundary. Finally, the 150, project that across. There is our intercept between the 150 structure contour and the 150 topographic contour. So that will be a place of outcrop along our boundary. So we can simply identify four points along our geological boundary and draw it in. Now, where does it go from there? Well, you'll notice that as we go south of our point there towards that, that funny snaky thing, which is a road, the topography swings to be north-south. So the boundary is going to curve around like this. So there's our prediction of the base of the Erebor Quartzite, and we can simply colour in that unit. There we are. So that is our prediction. We can forecast the position of the boundary, and if we were working this area for real, that's something we could use to target our next bit of field work to test this prediction, go in the field and see if we can map the boundary out in the location that we predicted it to be using this structure contour method. It's an enormously powerful technique for building a hypothesis-based approach in geological mapping. So, just to recap, we've drawn structure contours on the base of the Erebor Quartzite. We've used these to estimate the orientation of this boundary, the base of the Erebor Quartzite, and we've reported its orientation in terms of a strike and a dip. We've gone on by looking at the map pattern at the top of the Erebor Quartzite to estimate this formation's true stratigraphic thickness. And then finally, we've projected our structure contour array at the base of the Erebor Quartzite southwest across Loch Lane Cool, and we've used these to construct the predicted trace of this boundary in the otherwise unmapped area. Our structure contour array, our boundary determination, our estimation of the true stratigraphic thickness, and our prediction of the position of the geological boundary based on a projection of structure contours. So this is just a quick illustration of the power of using structure contours in map interpretation. I hope you found this short video useful and you now feel empowered to use structure contours in your own map interpretations.